Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Matt Baumgartner, and today, guys, we're going to be taking a look at the steps and the process of building a t shirt launcher. And we're going to be building a rocket launcher style cannon, so let's get into it. Now, there are three parts to your cannon, and the first is the tank. This involves the end cap, which you will put a bike valve in to add pressure. Next is the tank, which holds all your air. You're going to put a pressure gauge in to tell your air pressure. Lastly is the adapters. We have a 4 inch to 2 inch adapter and a 2 inch to 3 quarter inch adapter. The next part of your cannon is your firing mechanism and this is made up of your handle which you will put your button and your safety switch in and secondly, your sprinkler valve, which is what does the magic for you and makes your cannon shoot. The last part of this cannon is the barrel. The barrel is made up of the adapters, which we have a 3 quarter inch to a 2 inch adapter, and a 2 inch adapter to a 3 inch adapter. And the final part is the actual barrel itself. Now I'm using a 14 inch long barrel so that the cannon can be fairly accurate and fairly strong. If you wanted the cannon to be more accurate, you would use a longer barrel. Now once you have all of the pieces cut to your liking, it is time to glue. Now I'm using Oatly PVC Purple Primer and Glue. And now the process that I'm doing here is called solvent welding. So you put your primer and you wrap it around both pieces and then you do the same with the glue. And once you've done that, you go ahead and you push your pieces together. Now be careful to, as you put your pieces together, you twist them to a 90 degree angle. And after you have done this, you have to push with all of your might on the pieces being glued as they are melting and bonding back together. And the reason why you push is because as they are melting and bonding back together, they become hot and when they become hot, they're expanding and they are pushing. And sometimes if you don't push, they will expand outwards and they will not work properly. So once you're done with this, you have to wait for a long total of 24 hours and then your chemical bond will be good to go. So this is the solenoid. When electricity passes through it, it puts it up to the ball valve in the actual sprinkler valve and that turns and lets the actual air so now that you're done gluing and putting together the PVC parts of your cannon, we're going to go into the electronics, and the first part of that is your batteries. Now I've connected positive to negative, and you use 9 volts to power your whole thing. You want to use 2 because 1 is just not powerful enough to get that signal. And the next part of your cannon is your switch. Now I like to call this a safety switch because whilst the switch is on, you cannot have any electricity pass through it so you will not be able to fire the cannon. However, once you turn it off, you will be able to fire the cannon as much as you want. Now the last part before you go back to the solenoid is the button. Now if you have both 9 volts in and you have turned your safety off, you can push this and you should hear a clicking sound as long as you have no air in your cannon. If you hear this clicking sound, that means your cannon is working. Now like I said, with your electronics, before you solder them, you want to do a dry run. That means you intertwine all of your electric components together in the right order, plug your two 9 volts up, and then turn your safety off and push the button. If you're hearing the clicking sound, you did it right. If not, I would go back and rewatch the electronic stages. Now that you've done this and you know it works, you're going to go into soldering. So you go to a soldering station, turn it on, and you solder all your parts together. Now I'd be very giving with the amount of solder you use, and I'd be very thorough with how you cover the wires. Because it has been known to, in the past, when we soldered them, our actual solenoid will stop in the middle of firing. So be very thorough when you solder your things together, and it should work fairly. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've put all of the wiring into tubes. I have also drilled holes for the button and for the safety switch. This is just something that I thought preferably and that I thought really looked nice. You can change the design if you really would like to. So I have used Schedule 40 PVC for this entire cannon. It is critical that you get this, along with all the other pieces required. 
Now, the, altogether, this cannon costs around $50, but if you keep it in good condition and you build it right, I guarantee that it will work very well for you. The sky is the limit with the innovation for this. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found it insightful and a little funny. And I will see you guys later.